Hello and welcome to the House of Hidalgo show. This is your host Rick Dehijo Binya and today is the 17th day of September 2018. This is episode 13. In this case it's lucky number 13 because we don't believe in that superstitious garbage. But uh, today we're going to talk about the word democracy. I've been hearing it all over the place in the news. Uh, you know, for a long time now, people have been people have been quoting that uh, this democracy, this democracy. I've heard it so many times that I'm sick to my stomach about the word democracy. Now, how does this relate to the God and wrestling connection? Well, it relates because your liberties are directly connected to the form of government that you uh, subject yourself to. So, if you're a Republican form of government that's one thing but if you're a democracy that's a completely different thing and we need to get to the bottom of that so when I come when I come back after these uh, short uh, messages from my sponsors uh, we'll get right to it thank you very much after these messages we'll be right back did you know you can support the house of Hidalgo show and your favorite cause at the same time? At the House of Hidalgo store, we promote conversation starters. Our apparel is sure to get them talking. Stop in at teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash House of Hidalgo or click the link in the description box of this video to gaze upon the creativity. Then just order what you want, when you want it, and have it shipped directly to you. Wow! The House of Hidalgo store is here to serve you. Get conversation started the old-fashioned way. Wear it. Don't swear it. And remember, we're all about the blood. Sewing Cool Stuff and More of Yankton is your one-stop for general alterations, repairs, and custom sewing and sewing classes. Custom projects from baby blankets and memory quilts to jingle and shawl dance regalia dresses and everything in between. Sewing cool stuff and more. It's all about the blood. Yep, that's the slogan in the ministry I operate and with the products that I buy. Hi, I'm Rick Tahijo Binya, and I'm the host of the House of Hidalgo show on YouTube. If you're looking to promote your health with CBD oils, you're looking at a booking. Book GreenFlowerBotanicals.com for your health needs and use the link provided in the comment section of this video because doing so will help you cleanse your blood and promote the blood of Jesus to the world. Just join our Healthy for the Blood campaign by ordering through the link below and a percentage of the sale will benefit my ministry. It's all about the blood. All right, so we're back and what you're looking at right now is the National Archive page. And uh, the National Archives, they have the founding documents, full transcripts of the founding documents. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little test here. Okay, if you notice, oops, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word democracy. Oh, wait, what's all that beeping? Huh the word democracy let me see wait I don't see it in here but wait it the news has been telling me it's a democracy why isn't the word democracy in our our founding document that makes me angry how can the word democracy not be in this document and everybody keeps talking about democracy what's going on here what in the world huh you know, how come they keep saying democracy if there's if democracy isn't in here? I mean, what 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 kind of what kind of government were we given after all? I mean, let's type in republic here. I've heard I've heard people say that we're a republic. So I'm gonna oh wait, something popped up here. Article four, section four. And let's see what it says here. It says, The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union. This person keeps popping up here. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republican form of government. 
Okay, so that means that the Republicans should win every time, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. This was before parties. So this isn't a party thing. This was this was totally before all the parties even existed. So, <laughs> my bad. I guess let's go back to block A then. Let's read it again. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. Now, there's a curious word in here that that's interesting because the founding fathers must have realized that there's more than one government okay obviously because if, if if they had if there hadn't been more than one government should they not have said the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a, a uh, or excuse me the United States shall guarantee to every state in the union a Republican form of government instead it said the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union wait a minute the word this seems to indicate that there might be more than one union well interesting right well at the time it was written the word this might have been put there just to separate this government from all the other governments of the world. But, in the day and the time in which we live, that word this certainly represents the fact that there very well may be more than one government upon the land. So, let's explore and see what these people are talking about when they say democracy. You did notice that the word democracy doesn't appear anywhere in this document at all. Okay? And I guess, you know, we can do one more one more thing here. Let's do this while I'm on the air. I'm going to type in uh, declaration of oh boy sorry guys man okay declaration of independence okay oh look view the transcript Let's view the... Okay, so here's the Declaration of Independence. Everybody knows that our, our primary government was based on, first, the Declaration of Independence, um, and then the Constitution. Okay? Everybody knows that. Everybody also knows that there was a... that there were uh, Articles of Confederation that became the Constitution. We all know this. We all get it. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a search here, too. Just to make sure the word democracy doesn't show up in here, I'm going to do a control F and I'm going to start to type in democracy. Let's see if we get a bell. Oh boy, the word democracy doesn't show up anywhere in the document that separated us from England. Wow, you would have thought that our founding fathers would have separated us from England and really started you know bolstering and and and, and being you know uh, having passion for this great democracy that they were building but wait apparently they didn't build a democracy they they built something else they built something called a republic a Republican form of government okay so we're going to come back and we're going to talk about what a Republican form of government is shortly. But for now, I want to go look up this democracy thing. And, you know, I did some exploration and I looked at this United Nations. Okay. 
And what's funny is the United Nations, and I'm going to show you, the word democracy doesn't really show up in the UN Charter either. Okay, uh, let's do a control F, control F, and I'm going to type in democracy. Wait, democracy doesn't show up in the Charter, but it does show up in the issues and campaigns. Let's see what this says here. Ah, democracy is a universally recognized ideal as is one of the core values and principles of the United Nations. It provides an environment for the protection and effective realization of human rights. Really? These values are embodied in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And here's the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now here is, is I, I want to, I'm going to ask a, a, a question before we even look at this. Who created humans? Did the United States of America create humans? Did Haiti create humans? Did any country on this earth create humans? Uh, no, obviously not. Humans created nations. Nations were not the creators of humans. Okay? So human rights don't come from nations. Nations acknowledge human rights, sure, but they, in order to acknowledge a human right, you're going to have to acknowledge where the right came from. Okay? So let's see how many times I'm going to do another control F here. How many times the United Nations Treaty Declaration of Human Rights, which is in their own words the principle and cornerstone of democracy. Okay? Let's see how many times it says the word God. Wait. You mean God doesn't even show up in here at all? Wait, 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 wait. wait okay, let's, let's let's try a different word. Obviously, you know, in the in the Declaration of Independence, it uses the word creator. Well, wait a minute. So the word creator doesn't show up in here either. So this Declaration of Human Rights totally leaves out the only authority to back human rights in the universe. The only authority to back human rights in the universe doesn't even show up in this entire document. So, if you start taking these articles, you know, everyone has a right to life, liberty, and security of person. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But what backs it up? I mean, who, who, who says so? Okay, you've, you've, you've come to acknowledge it, but you acknowledge no place where it comes from, so it's all ambiguous. It can be reasoned away through statute. Okay, or no one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all forms. Oh, really? All forms? What do you call conversion of a birth certificate from a document proving that one has a birthright to a document that actually suggests that there is a trust in existence that's capitalizing on the labors of someone that they have no access to or that the access of it is hidden. Hmm. Is that servitude? Is that slavery? Is that a slave trade? Are they not traded on the stock market? It is. It's slave trade. So they don't even listen to their own quote unquote laws. Why? Because they're not laws. Laws come from a relevant source. There's nothing relevant here. These are nations that are ambiguous. 
They have no authority. Zero. These nations have no authority. They have no authority over human rights. Human rights were not delegated by them. And human rights cannot be supported by them. All they can do is do their job. If they're truly a government, then their job is to protect each individual and their personal liberty. Which is actually what the job of a Republican form of government is. Let me show you. <clears throat> we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Whoa. Hold on. Hold the press. Governments are instituted among men? You mean men make governments? But, but, but so, so where do governments get their power? Deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. Oh, you mean like a democracy, right? Where, where collectively we say we consent? right that's what you meant that's what you mean well if that's what they meant then why the next part that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them seem, shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate the governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed then they go on to say but when a long train of abuses okay and usurpation so they start listing them right they start listing them here's all the abuses and by the way a lot of these are still taking place in different ways okay so therefore The representatives of the United States of America in General Congress assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the World. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Supreme Judge of the World. So, th this wasn't even, they're not appealing to a king. They're just telling, they're noticing a king. <clears throat> They're noticing the king. King George was just a little peon. They didn't care about King George. They were talking about King George in here. But King George had nothing to do with anything. King George was just a, a you know, a, a tyrant king. They're appealing to God. The supreme judge of the world. To, for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies. Hmm. Wonder where they got their authority from. Since they were appealing to the supreme judge of the world. You do the math. Solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. That they are absolved of all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. 
and then as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states might of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. <clears throat> Do you see what's going on here? Who is in charge? Who is being appealed to? And in that appeal, in that appeal, okay, let's 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 go a little further. In that appeal, they write the constitution, excuse me, they they declare their independence. They write the constitution. Here's the constitution. Okay. Which we can look at the uh, transcript if we need to, but we're not going to. Just wanted to show you it. Then we got the Bill of Rights, right? The first ten amendments to the Constitution. Wait, that's it? You mean these are the three documents that our whole government is founded on? Oh well, what do they all point to? Let's go back to the transcript of the Declaration of Independence and let's read that first paragraph. This unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America, lowercase u, by the way, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve their political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. laws of nature and of nature's God. Who created nature again? Who was it that created the earth in six days and everything in it? Who was it that rested on the seventh day again? That's what I thought. So the Declaration of Independence is pointing to that. The Constitution. Hmm. Even in its preamble, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense and promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain, ordain. Hmm. Wonder who does the ordaining and establish the Constitution, this Constitution, for the United States of America. Do you see the connection here? Is this starting to make sense to you? Where all of us, where the United States came from? The United States of America? Right? And then, just to make it super clear, On the 25th day of 19, or 1789, the first Congress of the United States proposes 12 amendments to the Constitution. And what becomes the first? Do you know what becomes the first? The third becomes the first. The Congress shall make no law no law, no law, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise, free exercise, free exercise thereof or abridging, abridging, abridging the freedom of speech. Who is this again that we're talking about? Oh, that's right. We're talking about Congress not being able to make a law. 
that abridges the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. But the question is, who is the government? If we listen to all those who are elected by U.S. individuals who have succumbed to the toxic 14th Amendment and become United States citizens, lowercase c. If we listen to their elected officials, then who are they? Who are, what kind of government is it? They say it's democracy. And don't tell me, don't start giving me this libertarian stuff, okay? Because I've heard Rand Paul talk about our democracy. If we have a democracy, it's because we're being governed under this. And if we, if, if, uh, if your rights under the Constitution are being recognized, which they're not, it's being governed under this. Because you'll notice there's very closely associated wording. See, look at these articles. You go through here and you, you read them. You'll notice that the language is very similar to that of our Bill of Rights. Very similar. But it doesn't point to the actual authority. So it's unauthoritative. You might actually say it's authoritarian. But wait. So if we're actually not under the Constitution right now, in the United States. Notice I did not mention the United States of America. <clears throat> then what are we under? Are we protected by the rule of law? Or is there a law that even rules? Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I bring all this up, because I'm about to say something super controversial. When I say this, I may lose some people, but if I lose them, it's because they have not stopped to think. I'm about to say something that is so controversial that some people will never listen to this again. It's only controversial because people will not stop and listen to the words I'm about to say. If people did listen closely to these words, they would not only give me an amen, but they would jump on board as quick as they possibly could, and they would support this broadcast. Because of all things, one thing that cannot be said about the House of Hidalgo show is that we are simpletons. We are not simpletons here. So, here's the phrase that I'm going to say that's going to make some people angry. Governments are fought for. Freedom is understood. So Rick, why why is that going to make so many people angry? Well, we live in a military industrial complex nation. And for some reason, we tend to think that freedom isn't free. That we have to defend freedom. Well, actually, we don't. 
Freedom isn't defendable. Freedom is understood. You see, freedom doesn't come through government. Government doesn't provide freedom. For those who are in Christ are free. They are free indeed. Governments don't provide freedom. So governments don't defend freedom. Governments are fought for. What you're fighting for in a true military, you know, concept. If you're going to look at a military in a true light, what they're fighting for is the form of government. Freedom is understood. The reason we have lost freedom in America is not because government has taken it away, but because we have been too, and pardon me, but stupid to understand the truth. Freedom is understood. It is not costly. Actually, it is free. But only to those who understand it and only to those who apply it. Period. I want to show you something biblical that is very much related to the statement that I just made and something that I think is misunderstood. I am in Matthew chapter 25 and this is the parable of the virgins. Now why am I reading the parable of the virgins? Well, we live in a day today when it's kind of scary. People are trying to be prepared for when the blank hits the fan. Because when the blank hits the fan, people need to be ready to provide for themselves. Because there will be no corporation to provide it for you. Right now, with the food stamps and all that stuff, you've got a corporation that's willing to provide for you in return for your uh, for your signature which they hypothecate okay so I'm gonna read this and with preparation in mind I'm gonna point out something maybe you've never seen before Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, let's stop there for one second. I want to point out that the kingdom of God is being likened unto ten virgins. Okay? Keep that in mind as we go through. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They were not prepared. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, and we're, we're living in those days now, right? I mean, if you're following this Q thing, all right, the stuff might hit the fan real soon. That by by the way that we're being understood here, okay, the, if we're understanding it correctly, <clears throat> the stuff might hit the fan real soon. So when the while the bridegroom tarried, and it's been tarrying, we've been waiting for arrest, these indictments, right? They all slumbered and slept. Okay? They all slumbered and slept. That's what America's doing right now. They're slumbering and sleeping. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. The trumpet sounded. 
The bridegroom's here. All these virgins are panicking. Oh my goodness, the bridegroom. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Notice, all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us some of your oil. Give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. You can see him just begging, right? Please, come on. Give me some oil, man. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So go go to the oil salesman. They'll they'll help you because I don't have enough to, to share. Because I might not have enough if I give some uh, to you. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Right? No more opportunity. Done over. Sorry, unwise virgins, you're out. Okay. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Reminds me of the, uh, the ark, right? Reminds me of Noah's ark. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, all of us have heard preachers get up in the pulpit and talk about the fact that this is about being prepared for that time. They equate salvation to it. And it's been, I've heard some of the best sermons in the world talking about this, but I've never heard what I'm about to tell you. <clears throat> Did you notice that all ten were virgins? Did you notice? that only virgins qualified for the bridegroom. Was that even a consideration in your mind? Did you notice that when the five virgins that were unwise came to the door, <clears throat> the Lord said to them, I know you not. But notice that he did respond to them. He did say, I know you not. So it was not a matter of, who are you? Don't even pay attention to them. Just cast them into the fire. <clears throat> separation of wheat and tares this is not a matter of wheat and tares we had all wheat these were the elite they were the ten virgins they were all prepared for the bridegroom some failed to be prepared with supplies but they were yet all virgins notice this was not the parable of the ten virgins and ten whores it was not. Why? Because the whores are already disqualified. Because they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They are already disqualified. They don't even bother to mention the whores here. Yet, here we are in a day in a time when to prove your capacity all you have to do is take ownership of that thing which was taken from you used against you to create a capacity that's lesser than that of a birthright all you have to do is authenticate and there are people, I mean, I've got them in my own family, who refuse to authenticate. Let me give you the parallel. Those who refuse 
to take back that which was stolen from them are likened to the ones that have not even been mentioned in this parable. <clears throat> they are like the whore of Babylon, who when the bridegroom comes, won't even be mentioned, won't even be spoken to. They will just send the workers into the field they will rip up the tares. They will throw them into the fire without even a word. If you think that's an unrighteous judge, think again. The judge, the supreme judge of this whole universe has come time and time and time again into our hearts, into our minds, and into our houses, and has told us what we need to do to be saved. Okay? He has said, come out of her. Because if you don't, you're going to be seen as part of her. I'm paraphrasing but I'm doing it to make it simple because obviously I need to make it more simple. My own, some of my own family doesn't even get it. If tomorrow they started rounding up U.S. individuals to pay for the fake national debt which is the responsibility of the corporation but because US individuals are instrumentalities of the corporation if they started rounding people up putting them in FEMA camps to pay off the debt and the only thing separating you from a FEMA camp was authentication how would you feel? How would you feel when all of a sudden that one thing that was so easy to do you neglected to do it and you weren't found among the virgins but you were found to be among the whores of Babylon. Ladies and gentlemen I'm not trying to be crude or rough here I'm trying to tell you that there is a simple way to prove your capacity here on earth as it is in heaven okay take ownership take ownership be one who's found to have come out of her come out of her that whore of Babylon do not be a child of that whore be ye wise as serpents, but harmless like doves. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be the last time you ever hear me talk about this. Because I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's difficult. But I had to come out one more time as strong as I possibly can. And I'm going to say that very controversial thing one more time governments are fought for freedom is understood if you understand your capacity and you understand how you can achieve your capacity and you haven't done it as easy as it is I don't know what to say I don't know what to say this is Rick Tahija Binyan this has been another episode of the House of Hidalgo show you know where to find me I'm all over the internet. The Rock of Salem .org. It can be a part of Edubytes Premium. And for five, which is like the, the, the number of a foot long, right? Five dollar foot long, remember that commercial? For five dollars or more a month, you can be a premium subscriber to either Edubytes or you could go over to 
Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the House of Hidalgo Show. You go over there, you can do the same thing. Either way, you get access to all of it. I got some premium stuff on there. I just taught people how to do university level education for their own family. Okay? I just literally did a class on that. And it's up there ready for people to devour to get that. God bless all of you. I hope life finds you in a great place. And I hope you all understand the things that I'm talking about. I hope you're not too mad at me, but I hope you're a little bit irritated. God bless you. We'll see you next time on the House of Hidalgo Show. And remember, the House of Hidalgo, we're all about the blood. <laughs>